which are a good part of this business is I have spent, uh, I think the first biggest event I remember was the Thai, uh, the Thai ISP event. So where I went there and I know the first 2008, December or October, November, December. So I went to that event and I was asking every, wherever I was going to the event, I was a lot coming up. So I kind of spent a lot of time and energy in announcing and telling that the visibility, branding visibility. So I started almost literally a one year before of, uh, the actual product was launched. So why I want to highlight that one point is a lot of people are very skeptical about sharing their idea. So that is one thing I want to really highlight one point here. The more you share, probably the better you get the knowledge or the information. So people will say, hey, have you looked at this site? Have you uh, know about this event? So people are actually coming back and telling a lot more information which I don't know. Because that time I did, I did not even aware of uh, there was a product in US called event right? So people are saying, hey, have you seen it? You know? so, so that is where the whole value comes when you have an idea. It is good to share with as many as number of people. There is nothing, you know, a lot of people, you know, spectacle about, okay, what if somebody copies it? They might copy your idea, but they can't copy your passion, what you wanted to do, right? Even now, always my style of building is, I first tell, announce to the world and then start doing it. So it's, that's the way I, because it's like two ways it helps. First, you're actually making yourself accountable to someone else, right? And when you have an idea, when you're sharing with that to someone, other people will see a different angle. What you see a different one angle, other people will see a completely different angle. And those inputs are very, very, very useful to you know, any, any company which are starting or which are already you know, doing. So even a small feature, sometimes I go and discuss with somebody and says, hey, you're planning to do this uh, feature. So, so discussing that upfront would really, really make a difference. Okay. So that is one part of it, uh, while I'm doing so, almost literally one year, we have keep done that. Uh, that is the bad uh, you know, system it was. So I kept like five, six people. Their job is just to create the event, create the entire event, send them the link, and just say, if you approve it, we'll publish it. So because that is the situation. So that was almost gone like two, three years. And we said, okay, this is not going to scale the business. It's not going to work out. So what can I do? So we went and uh, created a thousand rupees uh, event entry creation fee. The, my idea was not to take the thousand rupees. My idea is to get rid of the, the work what we do it. So that really changed the game. We said, okay, no, we don't want, there's certain customers back then says, why should we pay 1,000 rupees so we don't want to do it. I said, fine. It is 1,000 rupees only if I have to create the event. The moment you create the event, it's free still. So, you know, so the small change, then completely 100% now events are actually created by individual people. We don't create even a single event today in the platform where we were 100% doing all the events. So sometimes you need to, you know, not necessarily take the money, but you put certain price, certain activities, so certain things will shift from. So that saved a lot of money for me, no need to create it. And when we create it, there is a lot of information gets changed in the events and nobody is taking the accountability. They are not owners of that particular product. So that also helped us in a big way. So now they are the owners of the event. So they are the one who created the event. So even if there is a change in the information, now they come back and update and do all that. So that was the major thing. I think the other turning point for uh, Mira events in the process is the good part is wherever uh, for the sake of the event organizers benefit, right? So they promote uh, Mira events as well. So we have not even spent literally at zero dollars is what we spent for marketing from day one. We never spent any huge amounts of money for marketing of any event or marketing of our own brand also. The reason was because we have become a part of integral part of the event organizers. So they keep us in our, their logo, their emailers. They keep on their banner uh, things, they print out on the hoardings or radio ads. So without spending a single penny, we got this ad additional advantage because the platform was free. For them, we are given the what is necessary to sell. So that become, we become a literal integral part of the events business. So we, without marketing spend also, sometimes you can really cr create a brand which has the potential, depends upon the business model. So we chosen that without, we will not spend the money, we will not charge them up rent. But if there is a business opportunity, we could be able to create it. So that is how the journey was grown. And another point is, it took literally one year of time to do a one crore worth of ticketing business. One year of time, like literally one year to do the business. Literally one lakh rupee if you come on the initial days. We were really jumping, the people were happy and you know, we were jumping it. So one lakh, you know, even if a transaction. You know. So it took one year to do uh, the one crore business. And today, there are days where we do that business in one day. So that is the, you know, the growth, uh, what we've seen from, you know, in the process, you know. So it really took a lot of hard work, a lot of commitment in terms of my team, you know, who are there. Because I uh, so really, you know, transformed the business into a completely different angle. 
if you really talk about the uh, thing, you know, the w one lesson I personally would give advice there is, I was actually balancing on two areas. I started my own services company, taking that money feed and I was actually doing bootstrapping the Mera Events business, right? But if you really look at it, I, would, would you do any time or would you recommend this to anybody else next time? I would never do that. So that I think that now today when I am going back and uh, checking out uh, uh, back days, what is one big mistake probably I would, I would agree and commit is that focus, right? Otherwise this company would have been definitely much bigger than what you see today. If I were given all my six years of time, 100% focus to that one company, but I did not do that. So that is one probably, uh, you know, the regret or, you know, maybe I would do differently if I do now as a starting company, whatever I do, 100% I would give my energy, time, focus, do for one thing. So a lot of people I, when I meet, you know, they say, I'm doing a job, okay, I will start a part time. I says, you know, either you do this or do that, but try, don't try to do that. So it's not easier to learn that mistake, but I'm telling whoever is there, anybody is here, who is trying to balance multiple things. You know, or well, well, they're all in the job, they're thinking about a startup company, you know, or they're doing a service company and then want to move to product company because that's where this is. So I would say is take one, whichever the best you can take it, but don't try to be on the two, both the boats. So that is the biggest thing which personally I would say a million dollar value myself, I can say it, right? The reason is the Mera events actually grown or seen what you are in the last two years, right? And that is where I was full time. So I sold my original company, which is Versant Technologies. I, we sold it completely, uh, you know, uh, to a company. After that, I could able to raise a million dollar money. And after that, probably another two more million. So, you know, and then the company, because of the 100% focus, we were able to grow the team, grow the, uh, the business. We got the biggest of the clients in India, which is the Sunburn, uh, the Viacom, the Sensation. So the biggest of the events were with us. So it is all about giving that 100% focus. So I think that is one thing which I would go back and regret in terms of, you know, what would I do differently if I have to start once again, giving 100% focus. The second biggest thing probably which I would, uh, you know, talk about more is the UI and UX, right? So we were always as a techie or a person, you know, I was always in the mood that, okay, I'm solving some problem. That's fine, you know, it is, it is, it is doing the job, right? Maybe that time it was maybe right, but if I go back and check now, if somebody else is starting now, it looks so silly because once you create certain brand that you are not the best in that space, right? It takes a lot more energy, maybe 10 times of energy time if you need to rebuild that brand according to the mindset of the customer, you know? So today if you are going and doing it, not only giving a focus 100%, what is one thing I would give like, you know, 80% of your energy, time and focus, whatever you do, even a small thing, you would actually give a you know, great UI and UX. So I think that is one thing which we have not done right. So if I go back and regret and, and I try, still today, we're not the best UI or design company or design uh, uh, for Mera events compared to other portals also sometimes. So I always keep regretting it. But that should be your part of your core team. When you're building your core team, I think while you're building that particular activity, I think the core team is need to be have that UI and you know that sense to the details is very, very, very important, you know. So, and that is exactly what we have implemented a new product recently called Planica. So part of that product, so we have implemented a new product Planica. So we literally three months, we have not done anything. If you come to our office now, everywhere they only went through the journey of the experience of a customer or the user. So we just, they draw and draw and charts and charts and three months literally, they were lived in that life on the paper. And then they started developing the product. Today, if you see a lot of people, you know, the, the product which called Planica.in, the goal is to connect the event organizers with the event service providers. And this thought was also was there from the day one. Our goal is when we see anybody sees the first one, Mira Events, which has connecting the three, three icons. Mira Events was there in the middle. The event organizers is one side, the attendees one side, the service providers. So we never touched the first part, this part of it. And we recently tried to solve that pain area. So which is connecting the event organizers with the delegates. And this time we really, really done a great, uh, you know, focus from the day one with the journey of the experience. Even you do a small thing as per the standards of the industry. You know? So that really helped us. The moment I think we, within a week of launch of that product, we got the, uh, you know, maybe a call from a, the biggest customer in, in probably one of the biggest customer who does almost 90 crores of business in events alone. This platform is basically to find the service providers and they pay five to 6% just to find the vendor. And they never saw a product like, uh, you know, this in the market. So they said, 
we wanted to you know, give the order and almost it's through now. Because the difference is customers will also come to you, you know, in the process. So that is a second journey, probably that's the second lessons probably I would, uh, you know, happy to give you that. So the UI and UX is definitely there. And companies can actually take, you know, the sales approach or the marketing approach. And if you are in the B2C approach, right, the better you go on the marketing approach. But if you're in the B2B, probably you're okay to go with the sales approach. But if you're in the B2C, I think you need to really spend good amount of time on the marketing. Luckily, in our scenario, it was more because of the event organizers, everywhere they included, right? That is a deal what we, you know, do that. So that worked out very well. So if I, you know, uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe what kind of information you want to know, maybe one or two clues so that I will move my talk towards that. Anybody want to know any particular specific area? So I would actually take the journey towards that. Great, yeah. So I, th I think, so I think I, I, this is everybody is told and there's nothing. When I was also, you know, uh, going to attendance, everybody talking about team, team is very, very important, right? Everybody says, you know, a, a team is the most important thing. It was not so easy to, you know, understand that until you reach to a level, right? But one thing what we did was everybody we were hired from day one. When an employee comes to our company, this is what I, I used to say, you know, a lot of people claim, you know, how can you do that, you know? So what I'm saying, Whenever, even at a very, very small level of a company, we, we used to ask, what are you willing to lose to join here? Not what are you willing to, you know, like everybody comes with a hike. I'm, I always ask the question, how much cut you are willing to take it to join me? So, yes, all the times, even until now also we do that, you know, because if, if the person is really important, right, and a senior member, this is what I ask. Right, one of our uh, employee who joined for, actually he came for an interview, who is one of my uh, co-founder, I call him as uh, the most senior person in the team. He came for an interview, he worked for Oracle, he started his own company. So when he came to the interview, you know, he actually came for our, our other business, which is Oracle Retail. But I found him, he's not really, you know, he has a different spark in him. So I said, you know, why don't you look about events thing? I said, fine. So we asked him to do the research, homework, all that. When he comes back, I ask him, what are you willing to lose? So he's actually drawing maybe at that moment itself 60K, 65K, and usually anybody would co go and come and take another 10% hike or 15% hike, right? So I ask him, can you work for 50% of the salary? Then only I'm interested to take you. Directly straightforward says, you have to, I, I don't have money, but are you willing to work for 50% of your salary, what you're getting? Then I'm willing to take it. But with the condition that I'll give you double the money what you're losing today. In such a way that, so I given actually 2% of the share of the company at that moment, because my company valuation at that moment was 6 crores. So I said, he's working at 30,000 rupees. So he's I supposed to give, uh, you know, uh, 60,000 rupees, at least minimum. So 30,000 rupees every month you're losing. That means multiplied by 12, so 3.62. And I given 7.2 lakhs. So I given two years, 1% one, one at a 60, 60 crore valuation or 70 crores valuation. It is a 2% of the company. So I think that is one of the best decisions I have done it. Taking an employee who is like, because I started as a single founder company, right? Today at least an opportunity is there to start with multiple people, that's a good part. But when you are at, at least you know, there, you need a great team. So I think what I'm referring is Srikanth Panala and a couple other people. So who actually built this company? I would say, you know, I was only you know, maybe a person behind, but there are people who are front-end people who actually does the business, right? We are not, not the necessarily that founder does everything. There are people who actually why the company is successful, not because of the founder, you know, IP for us from a technology background. So that's why so many companies came. In our business, what happened, at least I've seen 40 different companies in the space of event ticketing, and I still see every quarter one more new portal saying that I will do event ticketing. But what happened in our scenario was because the market was so huge and it's un, not matured market. And in fact, we grown, I keep saying this, we grown because of our competitors. The reason was the, because it's in a very in a long market, uneducated market. So what they did was they went and tried to convince one customer the benefits of doing online versus offline ticketing. So they literally has to spend a day or two to educate the customer. Now the customer becomes educated. Now what he would do, now he's educated person or knows better knowledge. He looks for now who are the players in this space. And that is where the advantage comes to you, the early, you know, the early player or early more advantage is what we really got it. Now once he, then he will always try to compare, okay, what are you doing it? What is he doing? What is the benefit I'm getting from versus this one? 
may be that when that is the time where if, it, if there is a true USP, the your uh, real value is not there, the customer would go with him or customer would come back to the new player. So it's always a challenging in any market as per I know, unless we are keep on differentiating it or keep on making the difference of what, why should somebody should, we should always question ourselves, why should somebody should use us compared to this guy? What is that real USP, you have it in this process. So I think one of the point where we keep on, I think that is where we keep on innovating or differentiating. I think one of the feature we really did that was, the way our model was, we charge you a fixed percentage for selling the tickets. That's what from the event organizer. Right? And I was completely little bit against of charging the customer like BMS. I was completely against why should a user pay a convenience fee for the event organizer. So I was always discouraging that particular activity. So but the customer when I charge them 10% is what usually our average price for selling a ticket. So customer sometimes feels that oh that is too high. When I went and deeper and dig and why is too high is because he, he has to put a lot of efforts to sell his event and the fact is. 70 to 80 percent of the event ticket sells because of the event organizer, not because of portals. Even today, we all know that BMS or any other platforms are very big, but we are not going to movie because of BMS. We are going to movie because we want to go to movie and that is a channel. Same case with Mera events also. I always tell, uh, when I go to the event organizer, I says, if you are expect, thinking that Mera event sells the tickets, that is only one part. But the true is, if your event has the capacity, if your ha event has the brand and whatever it is, it automatically sells. Whether it is Mera events or any other platform, it doesn't really matter. So what we did basically is a small thing. Now, now this is a scenario, right? 70% actually sells because of the event organizer. Let's say we might add, say, additional 20, 30. But when we were charging 10% flat on every ticket, it was a burden to the customer. So we made a small change saying that if the ticket is sold by your efforts, we charge you the basic 2% of the payment gateway plus 2% of service charge. We recently just added the service charge with the recent market trends. But otherwise, if I sell the ticket only, I will charge you 10%. That one small change, I think, really, really made this company to a different level. So that was never even today, that was never innovated or never done by our competitor. So when I reach to a customer, I'll always tell, okay, I, this is where I started now in provocating the organizer also. Okay, you're using this platform. You're paying whatever, maybe you might be paying 6% or 7%, maybe lesser than me. But the point is you're paying for every ticket versus you're only paying for my, my commitment or my uh, offer. So customers come back and now say that why 10% why take 20% also? Customers are coming back and say it's fair enough to give even more percentage to you for your efforts. Even customers comes back and offers me 15%, 20% in, in, the, in the back to us. So, but for the small, only thing is we kept it, for your efforts, just pay the service charge, or the basic fee, and use the entire platform, literally. And for our efforts, we changed it. So, uh, yeah, so technically it is very simple. We, what we did was when we created an event, the URL really made a unique URL for the event organizer. For our efforts, we made a difference. So, as simple as that. And we have another feature which we have implemented, I think the only company probably in India or in some of the places, a small feature. And it came just on a thought and implemented in less than three, four hours of time. That one feature was, how now let's say there are 40 people or 50 people are here. You all bought the ticket and came here, let's say, right? Today, event organizer, you just came to the event, you paid to the event, and then you left. But the event organizers could have actually utilized these people who bought the ticket to bring at least one more person and incentivize both the parties. So we implemented a concept called viral ticketing. Still not gone the way I wanted, but the thought is that, okay, every delegate who buys the ticket, how can you make them involved as a part of your marketing channel? You incentivize 10% discount to the, uh, the person who is referring and a 5% discount or cash you know, to the person who is actually referring because of you. So that viral approach. So you would start sharing. Maybe at 100 rupees, you may not see the difference, but when it, there are events which is 10,000 rupees in average value or 5,000 rupees in value, a 10% cash back for every friend you refer, is a big money. Maybe end of the day, if you have a really good influence, you might end up going to that event free with your 10 friends. There, there are, see, they're marketing any company will anyway will spend 20 to 30 percent of marketing as a, as a marketing budget. So we, instead of spending on the holdings instead of there, they're the real, people who already bought the ticket means what? They're really interested, serious people. So we innovated that and given that opportunity as an opportunity to the customer. Okay, now you do this. It's a very small thing, literally done in three, four hours of time, right? 
maybe our, our we did not do great marketing but this really worked out so many times the august fest events couple of events i seen around 100 and 150 people came because of the referrals a 10% of the people actually out of the event coming from a referral because of the people who bought the ticket it was an amazing uh, an opportunity how do we scale right so that is the small small ideas a lot of times we think when we are solving the problems oh i think it has to be so big but i think it is all about thinking that small sometimes so very small idea very small effort which actually make the differences if you see both the methods whether the first scenario whether it's a 10% or the differentiation based on the organizer efforts versus the second one also it is all about less than a day work and another feature maybe a small feature we implemented i think i usually don't travel on bus but one day i, I took a red bus uh, to travel and then as soon as i finished my travel i got a message saying that how is your experience about mera events and i mean about uh, red bus and how is your experience of the bus itself I, I thought okay it looks like very simple very night and then i kind of given it and then why can't i implement the same concept for mera events so we implemented that so since then we know a lot more information about the event than what I, I had. Because we never know, there are 1,000 events are happening. You, I don't know how this event was uh, you know, going on. So we implemented a small feature where the same thing, I just put it, okay, as soon as the event is over or that same uh, couple of hours, we send out an email, how is your experience about the event and how is the experience about Mera events. So that really made a huge difference. Small thing, maybe less than a day work. So if I really look at it a lot of times to really make a difference from one company to another company, a lot of people think I have to build something which is very unique, right? So another small thing if I say every day morning, people want to know how many tickets they sold. So we implemented a small summary report email. Did you got this morning, uh, Sanjay? So they says, it says how many people seen it, how many tickets sold. So you don't need to go back to our dashboard, see how many tickets. Every day morning, 7 o'clock, they get that email. So that is like morning, the moment I wake up for our company as well as you know, individual people, they can see how many tickets they sold. Very small feature. But these are all the features. If I go back and analyze and ask the customer, what do you like? I was really surprised. These are the small features, which is less than a day work, really help the company to come here. Not the big activity, not something, you know. So that innovation part when you're talking about these small, small things, what you can make. You could ask, always ask the question, okay, I'll put only one hour effort or one day effort. What can I do something which is the maximum impact? So if you can, if we are all companies, when we can go and ask that back, I think that will really make a difference in my view. The small things, right? So this is where these kind of uh, smaller, smaller, you know, steps, what you made in the journey, really, really take it to the, you know, different angle completely. Will that answer? Yeah. Any other? Sure. Yeah. So I, I think so the journey continuing it, I think we still believe, I think we are in the, in the uh, another, I mean, we have seen, uh, personally I have seen it, uh, uh, 2000 journey, 2009 journey, and then I think uh, there is another storm is coming, that's why I want to warn everybody, there's a big storm coming up, so we need to buckle up, uh, you know, in terms of the way we run the companies, you know, yesterday I was reading the story, you know all the stories, what is happening, local way who got funded of $5 million is, 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 is struggling, recently Hairi was, I was really surprised uh, hearing the news of Hairi yesterday. So it is definitely a, a tough time is going to be ahead for all of the startup companies. I think the only, I was just, uh, there is a small group of uh, Hyderabad entrepreneurs group. I was just literally pushing. It's simple mantra, which we are also trying to follow and everybody I'm trying to recommend, you know, cut down the cost at least by 50% and increase your revenue by at least 100%. So you, there is an easier way to do it. And as a company, we were almost free literally for the six years, right? literally, you know, except the small portion of the tickets. Because, okay, we raise some money, okay, we let the grow, everybody wants to grow, 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 without fundamentally looking at the unit economics or the business, which is the really the challenge uh, in the market today. And all the same people who are saying unicorns now become cockroaches, huh? honeybees, all that. So it is very important, I think, you know, in the journey of this whole thing, I think even Mera events also lost little bit of track in saying, okay, let grow, grow. So we also lost the fundamentals of the unit economics, business and all that. So we realize that now. So we are also making the complete makeover or the changes uh, in the company right now. Literally looking at every corner of penny what we can uh, cut down and every corner of revenue what we can make it from the customer. So we started charging 2% of service charge for every customer, not from the, you know, uh, from the organizer. So we started charging that. So we are going detail level, every account, every transaction, how much money I made. Is it one rupee I made, 100 rupees I made, 1000 rupees I made. So we are going at looking at that detail level. So it is very important, I think, it's a time where 
we would work on the fundamentals of the business, no more freebie services to anybody. So we used to do a lot of free, 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 you know. Though we have grown it now, but that might have worked in that market. But I think the current market sees when we are giving to the service to somebody and also willing to pay, I don't think that business will go longer. I think it's a time where we really look at what the business we are doing. It is okay not to take a customer if he's not willing to pay or he doesn't appreciate you. We have been thinking the earlier days was okay, I'll go to a customer, okay, let me see, at least I get some opportunity, some learning. I think that's something, once we start making that as a free, I think that customer will never come back so easily also. It is, you know, I don't know how many companies can survive with that model. At least luckily we had that strong fundamental revenue models where we did not utilize it well. The moment I turned that switch on, probably an additional 10 lakh rupees was revenue into the company in less than a month. Just a small switch saying that we charge you 2%, we sell at a 5 crore worth of tickets per month. Today we are almost selling at a 5 crore worth of, five crore worth of tickets every month. So by just charging 2% of service charge, there's a 10 lakh rupees revenue in the company right away. So we, it's very, very important to do that. So we're also working out, end up with, there is going to be tough times for a startup company. Is that fancy word might go, at least it may be a journey, like maybe the next one year could be the, uh, I think the period where we need to do. A lot of companies may not survive. I think the real fade will go away, that real entrepreneurs will emerge out of this. And this is an opportunity for a lot of people. So this is, I think, the tough times, actually the right times for entrepreneurs in my view. I and mean, that's what exactly I've done. My first company was started in 2000 and everybody was laughing. Why are you starting the company now? Right? I said, I don't know ABCs of the business. If I can do, and tough times are equal to for everybody. Big guy and a small guy is same. If you can do something different, something you know, unique, and if you can put hard work, you can come back and equally do that as anybody else. I think it's the right time to start, no doubt about it, provided you're you are understanding the fundamentals of the business, the, you know, the unit economics, and understanding about the basic uh, business principles, I think we all can be successful in that. I think it's a great time to be part of these journeys. And the ecosystem, actually Hyderabad is now the best ecosystem. We have it compared to anywhere else. So at least traffic wise, you know, many, many, many you know, infrastructure wise, I think you just utilize that opportunity. And the last reason, we, we think a lot of times, you know, we don't have help. I think it's all about, are we asking that help? There's so many people are ready to help. Actually, what, when I went to the recent uh, Mysore, uh, in, in, uh, the event, which is iSpirit event, what I also realized it, it is we not asking the necessary help. There are a lot more people are ready to help to do what, more than what we can do. It's all about going, asking that, taking that extra help and being part of the you know, various events where you actually meet a lot of people. You know? Though I'm marketing my company, but events is one thing really changes the difference because you can really meet a lot of people and get the opportunity. With that, with that uh, I really thank for your time. I know you came uh, early and then really thank your time. I appreciate it. <laughs>